Okay, so we're moving on to part three in our six-part series of creating an Active Directory domain in Azure. Now, in this part, what we're going to do is we're going to use the Azure portal interface to create additional disks for the sysvol files, which is a recommended best practice when we virtualize Active Directory. And we're going to set both of our virtual machines with static IP addresses. Then what we'll do is we'll log into those machines the first time and we'll instantiate that new virtual disk. So again, we are on part three, configuring additional disks for the sysvol and setting static IPs. So I'm going to go back into my Azure portal interface and I'm going to come down to virtual machines. Now, the first thing we're going to do is create that additional disk space. So I'm actually going to click on the settings for my first virtual machine and then come over here to disks. I'm going to choose disks and I'm going to attach a new disk. Now, just to make it easy for me to remember, I'm going to append the default name that's given for the disk with an SV for sysvol. I will use a standard disk and again, all I need is a 10 gig disk space. Host caching by default, read and write, so I'm just going to choose that and choose OK. At this point, it'll instantiate that disk. I'm going to go ahead and pause this video while I do that on my second server. All right, so let's go back to our first server here, DC0001. I'm going to come over to settings. I'm going to go down to disks and just make sure that that disk is present. So there's the 10 gig data disk that we presented. Now, the second thing we need to do, and the new Azure interface makes this really easy, it's to set the static IP address on our subnet for this server. So I'm gonna go into network interfaces here. Notice it has a public IP address and a private IP address. I wanna set this private as static. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. It's going to open up the settings here. I'm going to go to IP addresses over here. And if you notice, all I have to do is here's the address it gave. I'm just going to choose static instead of dynamic and choose save. I'll quickly jump back to my other virtual machine. and I'll do the same thing. So I'm in that virtual machine. I come over to settings, network interfaces, all the way down here at the bottom. Choose the private IP address. Make sure it's not the same, which it's not. This one is five, the other one was four. I'm gonna choose IP addressing. If you need to, you can click all settings if this settings box didn't open up for you. Choose static, choose save. And now we're ready to actually log into those machines and instantiate that second drive into the operating system. So I'm going to choose the first server and then I'm going to choose connect. This is going to open up a remote desktop protocol session for me right down here and I'll say open. Let me move this over so you can see that. It says the publisher is not identified. That's fine. We're going to go ahead and connect. At this point, I need to give it the username for that server. So there's that. I'll give it my complex password. Choose OK. It'll then give me this box right here. I can say don't show this again. I'll say yes. If you notice, our network interfaces have been saved and it is going to open up a remote desktop session. So here's my remote desktop session. I'm going to pause while it briefly logs me in. So I've gone ahead and taken the liberty of logging into both of my domain controllers, the virtual machines that I'm going to create domain controllers here. So I'm on the server manager for DC01 and I want to instantiate that drive. I'm going to go into file and then right here for disks. It should find that new disk. There it is. That's the 10 gig disk. This is the one that I want to instantiate. So I'm going to right click and create a new volume on it. And I'll just walk through the new volume wizard. I'll choose next. There's the disk that I want. I'll choose next. 
The selected disk will be brought online, initialized, GPT is fine, I'll say OK. There's the size of the disk, I'll choose Next. I'm going to go ahead and change the drive letter to S, S as in sysvol. So I'll choose Next. And then I am going to give it a volume name of sysvol. So I'll choose Next. It'll give me a confirmation and I'll say create. Now at this point, it's going to go ahead and prepare that disk and instantiate it into my server. I'll close this out. And if you notice now, I have that 10 gig disk. It is ready to go. I will do this on the second server. So if you need to, go ahead and rewatch this part. But I would do it on the second server the same way. And then we're ready for the next part in this series. Take care.